Welcome everyone to today's video. Today we'll talk about the Network Nervous System, or NNS for short. This is the governance, or DAO, that governs the full internet computer. And this is just the first of a series of videos. Today we will motivate why we need the NNS and how it works. In the coming videos, we will then detail how you can interact with the network nervous system, how you can stake tokens and how you can participate in voting. We will also have a few more advanced videos for users who would like to fully verify proposals. But let's start today by understanding why we need a governance system. And to understand this, let's first understand a little bit better how the internet computer works. So, the internet computer consists of many layers. At the lowest layer, we have the node machines. These are the physical machines where the code is being run. Afterwards, there are a lot of layers um, defining how these node machines can talk to each other and how they can achieve consensus. This is what we call the IC protocol. And on the very top, we have the smart contracts. These are called canisters on the internet computer. And you can imagine that these are just programs that uh, run code and they can also talk to each other. So the blockchain is called the internet computer because the vision is really that everything, the whole internet can be run on this blockchain. So when you think about these canisters, you can really think about any application or for example, a website that you would interact with. And because these applications are run on a decentralized system, we call them decentralized applications or DAP for short. So why do we now need a governance system for this very complex system? Let us look at two reasons. So first, as with every software, we want to be able to evolve the internet computer over time. For example, we might want to make a more efficient consensus protocol, or we just might want to fix some bugs. So as you can see on this picture, we want to maybe decide to move from the purple version to the pink version. So someone needs to decide when and how to do such an upgrade and what new version to upgrade to. So this is already the first reason why we need a governance system that can make such decisions. Another reason why we need governance is that there need to be some decisions about the so-called topology. And let's look a little bit more into what I mean by this. So, as we've already mentioned on a high level, the internet computer is a distributed protocol run by multiple such nodes that you can see here. So you can imagine that each of these nodes with different colors is operated by a different person and is physically located in a different data center. These nodes then talk to each other to achieve some consensus because they all have the same state of the internet computer and such a collection of nodes that achieve consensus is called a subnet on the internet computer. And now actually, to make the internet computer scalable, there is more than one such subnet. And within each subnet, the nodes achieve a consensus. And on each such subnet, smart contract canisters can be hosted, but the canisters on the different subnets can still talk to each other. So they shouldn't really notice if they are on the same subnet or not. But these subnets are now a way to make the internet computer indefinitely scalable because we can always add new subnets if needed. And this is exactly uh, what we could decide to add a new subnet or another kind of decision could also be that we want to add a new node to a subnet um, to make it even more um, secure. So this gives us a lot of flexibility on the internet computer. But again, this is a kind of decision that has to be made by someone. And it's actually a very relevant decision because how many subnets we have, how many nodes are in each subnet and which nodes are in which subnet is paramount importance for the decentralization and the security of the internet computer. For making all of these decisions, for example, how and when to upgrade the protocol, where to add the nodes and how many subnets we should have, we need some mechanism or some governance system. And especially, we would like to make such decisions in a decentralized way. So we want a decentralized governance system. 
And this is precisely what the network nervous system is. It is a so-called DAO or decentralized autonomous organization. Um, and in particular, it's stake based. So the more tokens someone has, the more voting power they have. And it also is an open governance system. That means that everyone can become a participant and contribute to governance. In terms of architecture, the DAO is realized itself as canister smart contracts. You can see here uh, on the right that the canister in the front is supposed to reflect the DAO. And the NNS, the network nervous system, governs really the full internet computer. As we have already mentioned, it decides on protocol upgrades, on topology changes, but it also makes other decisions. For example, it decides when to change the governance itself. So, for example, when to change the voting rules or it makes tokenomic decisions. For example, how much voting rewards should be given out or how much rewards the node provider should get. So let's look a little bit more into how this governance actually works. And for this, there are two main concepts that are very important. First, the neurons. A neuron is basically a governance participant. But what does it actually consist of? So a neuron is actually a, some staked tokens. So anyone can become a governance participant by staking some ICP tokens and locking them for a certain period of time into a so-called neuron. And then they can participate in governance. And the other important concept is proposals. So proposals are basically just suggestions on how to update and evolve the protocol. We have already mentioned a few examples of what these suggestions could be. So any neuron can make a proposal and other neurons can then vote on it. And we now want to look into a little more detail how this works. So what's basically the whole life cycle of such a proposal? As we have mentioned, anyone can submit a proposal. Let's now look at the example uh, where Alice wants to submit a proposal and suggest a new version of the consensus layer. And to do so, she submits a proposal that actually includes the new code for the consensus layer. What governance now does for any proposal is it first kind of takes a snapshot of the neurons that exist at this point in time where the proposal is submitted. It creates a ballot for every neuron that is eligible to vote and it records the neurons voting power with the ballot. What does that mean? So the voting power is computed of different factors, but the most important ones are how many ICP are staked in this neuron and for how long are these uh, ICP staked, so locked in the neuron. And the idea here is that if someone has more ICP staked, they should have more say. And also if they commit to the internet computer for a longer time, uh, so they have a longer locking period, they are more likely to vote in the long-term interest of the internet computer, and therefore they should also have more say. So let's say uh, governance now has all the, of these ballots recorded. It knows who can vote with how much voting power, now other neurons can actually vote and make a decision. So here, Bob and Charlie uh, both say whether they want to adopt or reject the proposal that Alice has just submitted. And now after some time, a proposal is decided. A proposal can either be adopted or rejected. Let's now look at when it is adopted. So basically the standard maturity way is that the voting period is over and at least 50% of those who voted, voted yes. In addition, to make sure that there's no proposal adopted, even though there's hardly anyone caring about it and actually participating, the third condition for the standard maturity is that at least 3% of the total voting power voted yes. So this means some participation was required to actually adopt the proposal. And then there is basically a special rule uh, which says that at any point in time, even if the voting period is not yet over, if there is more than 50% of the voting power that voted yes, the proposal will be immediately adopted. Why is this the case? 
because as soon as 50% of the total voting power voted yes, there is no way that the result can be turned. And therefore, basically, why wait for the end of the voting period? A decision can be made immediately. In all cases that are not reflected here, the proposal is rejected. And what happens if a proposal is adopted? So in our example, recall that Alice wants to upgrade uh, the protocol to, let's say, the pink version. If this proposal is now adopted, it will be um, executed fully automatically on chain. And what this means is that the internet computer will remember itself. Um, we accepted this new version. The nodes will learn, oh, there's now a new version. We are told to upgrade to that. And they will fully automatically execute this. This has the huge advantage that there's no human action needed. Because human action might need, if there are actually humans that need to upgrade each individual node, that needs a lot of coordination, that is, of course, error prone. And most importantly, that requires trust to those centralized parties. So this is a huge advantage that almost all the proposals are executed fully on chain. There is just one um, exception, which are motion proposals, and they are more like for polling opinions rather than to make actual changes of the Internet computer. All right, so how can you now interact with the network nervous system? So anyone can actually build a front end to integrate with the NNS. This includes command line tools, but it's also possible to integrate this into other dApps. Um, it's something that already happened. But let me just mention two tools that might be useful for you to interact with the NNS. The first one is the NNS dApp front end. So this is basically one of the most popular front ends to interact with the NNS. It is fully on chain and it is also under the control of the NNS. So it is decentralized. Um, you can see on the right an example how you can um, look at this. This will, for example, be the view that you see when voting on a proposal. You also have other things in the menu for staking tokens and uh, your wallet, etc. But we will follow in the next videos with more details how you can navigate the NNS tab and um, yeah, do all of these different operations. Another tool that I want to mention is the ISP dashboard. So this is not on chain, this is off chain, and it contains a lot of general information about the internet computer. For example, uh, you can see on the top, it has uh, in the menu a lot of different details about, for example, the networks. So these are the subnets, which nodes are in which data centers and comprise a subnet. It also includes information um, about governance that you can see here on the right. For example, you can find all the proposals here, but also some um, collected overviews as shown here. Again, you can find uh, the link here um, and then I also have both uh, the links for the ISP dashboard and the NNS tab again here where you can check it out more, try it out a little and then as I mentioned we'll follow up with more detailed videos on how to navigate the NNS tab and later how to verify proposals where we will also make use of the ISP dashboard. I thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see many of you becoming more active in the NNSD.